There are many people who say that church life is difficult. May you end that today. Because nobody could block the early church. If you really know what the church is, you will receive a few real answers. It's the people who gathered here in Acts 1.14. Let's take a careful look at this. Look carefully and see who these people were. These are the people who saw the covenant of Calvary, which was the greatest incident in Israel's history. And because we don't have much time, just remember one word. In John 19, verse 30, Jesus said on the cross, It is finished. These are the people who saw Calvary. Jesus directly said, It is finished. That Christ finished everything. And even the most important thing here is that even now, Satan only fears Christ. He's not afraid of anything else. That he looks down on your skill. Because he's much more capable than you. And he laughs at your finances. That Satan only fears Christ. And so when you pray in Christ's name, Satan flees. But the most important thing is that as you go to church, you have to come to the complete conclusion of Christ because he finished it. This is a very important word. Like Satan knows the pastor who has not come to the conclusion of Christ. And he'll continue to bother him because he's not come to that conclusion. So this is very important. That this is very important regarding the stream of the Bible. This is what they saw. Oh, but it isn't finished yet. It isn't finished yet, but why are you saying it is finished? It's the real things that begin here. On the cross, he finished it all. And these people were dispatched from the Mount of Olives. And so what did they see here? They heard the explanation of what the blessing of the throne was. And he also explained what would happen in the coming age. That they were giving the mission regarding the future. And they had assurance. And these were the people who would be commissioned to all the world from Mark's upper room. They were these people. And so they had this answer. That once again, starting today, you need to keep in mind. That that people who just vaguely live the walk of faith, they just vaguely go back and forth to the church. But those who really want to live the walk of faith, when they go to church, they see three things, problems, crises, and conflicts. 
Especially people doing church work need to remember. And many of our church officers, when you go to church, you keep on seeing real problems. And because of people, there are so many conflicts. There are so many people you just can't get through to so many strange people out there. And you feel as if they keep going that way, they're going to face a crisis. You have to be cautious at this time. Even though it is a problem, a conflict, and a crisis, people who deny that are fools. Even though it's not a problem, they say it's a problem. It's not a conflict or a crisis, but they say it is a crisis. There are some people like this. And that's a mental illness. And those who see the problem, crisis, and conflicts for what they are is a normal person. That person might be a normal person, but they can't do world evangelization and they don't know what the church is. As I said earlier, we are seeing God's answer within that problem. And we see God's renewal within the conflicts. Then answers will continue to pour down. And you see God's opportunity or chance within the crises. Those who saw this gathered at the church. And this church isn't for nothing. Many people don't know the church. That what I said earlier, it is a shadow of the throne, and that is the church. That we're not talking about this church building. I'm saying that you are the church. This gathering is the church. 자, 그리고 그 지금 현재 보좌의 현장을 누리고 보좌의 미래가 된가 지금 진짜 천국 아닙니까? 거기에 가는. That currently you are enjoying the field of the church and you're talking about the church we'll go to in the future. That's talking about heaven. That enjoying that path in the church and we're talking about enjoying the throne in me. And the power of the throne that comes during worship. And the power of the throne that comes upon our posterity and the future. This is the church. That many people don't know what the church is. That we saw that Christ on Calvary finished it all. And those who saw that were called to the Mount of Olives. And calling them to the Mount of Olives, he gave them a tremendous mission. And with that, they gathered in Mark's upper room. And receiving power in Mark's upper room, they were commissioned to the world. This is the church. And so simply put, what is the church? That my 24 hours is talking about the power of the throne in me. And if I receive answers, I can save everything. But it's not just we, me who has to be revived. And so they heard about not just God's word, but talking about the things pertaining to God's word, and that's what they heard. And it's talking about the blessing on me as well as other people and the church. 
Enjoying this is church 24 hours. And so starting now, always remember three things. What's the very first message God gave to us? To save yourself. To save yourself. Then you can save all the world. And so with what takes place in between, we'll look at the conclusion first. Now, why is the church important? And let us say you receive Jesus Christ and receive salvation, then should you not go to church? And let us say you receive salvation and you go, don't go to church, you just worship on your own, you're going to go to heaven and you will receive answers. But this one thing will not take place. Everything else will work, but this one thing will not work. And so these three courtyards, we're talking about the yard that's going to head, head to the field. Because this is not taking place, the Lord emphasized the church so much. We have many gifted and talented people inside of our Busan and Seoul Emmanuel churches. We must do this. We must do future camp with our remnants. Inside the church. And more surely do this once we have our church construction. Holding on to our remnants, we are doing future camp. They call the remnants in on Saturdays because they don't know what prayer is. Do prayer camp. That we need to do this. As we do these two things, what else comes? Talent camp. Talent camp. And we must do this talent camp. Because our future generations don't know this. Why do we want you to gather in the church? That if God's blessing, the blessing of the throne comes upon you 24 hours a day, then that's it. But why do we keep on telling you to do this? And the reason why Israel's temple was destroyed was because they lacked these three things. What did they lack? That it was the courtyard for the Gentiles. And the courtyard of prayer. And the courtyard for the children. God commanded those three things, but they omitted them. So you must remember. That right now, remnants don't know what they should do about their future. And not even their parents know. That what should we do about the future? Right now, the age is rapidly changing. That the adults living here right now, they can just live out their lives, but we never know what's going to happen in the next five to ten years. And the studies that these kids are doing, that's the basics. That's why they do need to study. But they can't get a job with it. They can't do their work with just that. Immediately we see problems in the banks. That people are saying they don't want to entrust their money to the banks anymore. Uh, it's too bothersome. They use the blockchain so they can reach all the world. Then that's it. Then immediately that's what's happening. 
이걸 알고 지금 삼단체는 비대면 벌써 완성시키 놨잖아요. Knowing that, we see that the three organizations already figured out their contact-free systems. 앞으로 뭐 예를 들어서 이 코로나 계속될 수도 있습니다. That this pandemic may continue. Then what's going to happen? If it continues on. 이 비대면 예배 아니면 안 되지는 거예요. That we can only do contact-free or online services. 뭐 급박한 이상한 시대가 와. Then a very strange age is going to come upon us. 만약에 예, 오랜 후에 되면 되는데 급하게 올 겁니다. 병원도 안 가면 어떡할 겁니다. Then not only is going to take a, it's not going to take a very long time. It's going to come 야, very rapidly. 은행 대면하면 이제 무조건 쫓아내냅니다. 필요 없으니까. We no longer need to go to hospitals, and we no longer don't no longer need banks. 야, 지금 은행 직원 절반 줄였어요. 왜냐면 필요 없어. They've already downsized the banks to 50%. Why? Because they don't need any more of the workers there. 겁나는 시대가 올 겁니다. A fearsome age is approaching. 이러면서 막. And great spiritual problems will follow. If we don't teach our remnants what prayer is, we will be in trouble. And you yourselves don't even know very well. There weren't many adults where I sense this person knows how to pray. People don't know how to pray. And so we must teach our remnants. 이 삼구삼이라고 하는 굉장한 이 축복을 내가 받아들여. And the tremendous blessing of three nine three that God spoke to us about, we must receive that. And we are transmitting that to them. Now we need to do this. That calling in the remnants and telling them what they really need to do about the future, how they should pray. And what comes from there is the talent. We want to do this. You must remember. That tomorrow in the third lecture, I must talk, I'm going to talk about things that we must do, but we must also do this. Our precious remnants, they come to worship on the Lord's Day for just 30 minutes and then they go back home. That they're not going to gain any power with that. That's why we want to do this. That the blessing as well as the content of this amazing blessing, we have to put that in me. That's why the church is needed. Where else are we going to do this? The school only teaches academics. Where else are we going to learn this? And healing must take place here. I think about doctors, they treat patients, but they can't fundamentally heal them. They cannot. And doctors cannot lie. That if they don't show up on the x-rays, then they can't talk about it. That healing is not about that. It's about fundamentally gaining power, gaining strength, gaining spiritual power, and the five powers. This is the church. Looking out at all of the future generations. Why did God say it is finished on Calvary? And why did he explain the things pertaining to God's kingdom on the Mount of Olives? And he gave five very important things in Mark's upper room. What did he give? If you read throughout Acts chapter 2, we see five time schedules. And when chapter 2 is not very long, so if you have time, read, th read through it and you'll see five time schedules. And that's where you see your walk of faith. And in connection with that, we see five doors open. And unimaginable works take place. The five powers. Why must it be this way? In order to save the next generation. That what really comes from here is your real talent. And these kind of things must take place in this church. It must take place in the Emmanuel Soul Church and in Ulsan. That we're really preparing in Soul Emmanuel Church. We, this must arise. And because they did not do these three things, Jesus, God destroyed the temple in Jerusalem. And so, with that in mind, let's take a look. 
당연히 따라오는 것세 가지 있어요. That there are three things that rightfully follow. 하나도 되지 뭐올 수밖에 없어요. They don't have to come, but they're bound to come. 이때부터 뭐 올지 압니까? From this point on, what comes? 빛의 경 The economy of light. 이때부터. It comes from this point on. 두 번째 겁니다. The second thing comes. 이때부터 뭐 옵니까? What comes from this point on? 치유 운동. Healing movement. 알아, they don't have to come, but they're bound to come. And number three, 뭡니까? what is this? They're raising our future generations to the top, the summit movement. Then when we talk about summit, we talk about the heads of states, so we're talking about the very top. They're raising our remnants to the very top and helping them save the world. That this is church 24 hours. That these three amazing answers in our introduction come through the church. On Calvary, he said, it is finished. These words are very important. Why are they important? Because most people don't understand these words. That when I first came to this neighborhood, this young doa, I wasn't, I didn't, wasn't thinking of doing anything, anything great. But the church members really need to know what is the gospel and what is prayer. Without knowing that, they're just going back and forth in the church. You can't have that. 청장님 아시겠습니다만 와서 뭐갈 데가 없으면 열두 평 있다가 서른 한 지하로 가다 그거 나오고 아무 상관 없어 끝난 거예요. And I'm sure that our district mayor knows very well. Well, we began in a 30 square meter basement and then we moved to 100 square meters. But that had nothing to do with me. You have to understand these words to understand what church and worship is. 우리가 내가 살던 집도 없고 예배당도 없고 아무것도 없어. We didn't have a church building. We never. I didn't even have a place to live. 어떻게 해야 됩니까? Then what should I do? 그 and the tremendous church in Seoul, no need to copy what they're doing. Just do what's in the Bible. That's where I began. I directly went into the field and I was able to reach 30 places in one week. Then, well, I'm not going to sit there lamenting about the church building. And I told people like our Reverend Lee and Reverend Peck, do the gospel movement, spread the word movement, teach them what the gospel and prayer is, and teach them what their real talent is. And very quickly, a thousand disciples arose. Then what is a true miracle? How can you fit a thousand people into a hundred square meter basement? That's, there's nothing else is a miracle. That's a miracle. A thousand people in a hundred square meter basement. And once I go in, I can't even come back out. Because it's packed. But still, you can't put any more. And so, in the bus. We would put a tent out in the yard. Someone said fire that tent twice, but still, we set it up again. And so if there was a, a room for lease, then we would, would lease it out. And next door, there was a restaurant that was not being used, and so we rented that. And then we could fit a thousand people that way. And can you imagine how much of a mess that was? And so people started complaining to the neighbors, saying it's too noisy. Why is that church so noisy? And Elder Park, who's so nice, he was saying, you know, we're too noisy, and so we're hearing too many complaints from the neighbors. I said, Elder, don't say anything. That the only thing we're good at is making noise. Then once they move out, we can buy their homes. And so if they think it's noisy, let them leave. And this is how far we've come. And so from the beginning, I looked for a place like this. Why? It's over. Now what more is there? God told us to do world evangelization. There's nothing else to worry about. This Yongdo is a tremendous place. It's really strange. When I first met former Mayor An Sang-young, I told him. I said, Mayor, 
This Yeongdo is an amazing place. And you know, that's not my misconception. That the people from all over the world are coming here to receive training. And that's when we used to first level camp training here. That we borrowed the Taejongde Hotel. Then wouldn't it be great if we could have a bridge from this end of Busan all the way to Hewunde? And so, Mayor, if you say okay, then I'll mobilize all the people and we'll make, make have a go at it. I think about it, that makes no sense. Why would the city entrust that to me? But just as I said, that bridge was laid. And all those bridges passed through Yeongdo. It comes all the way from the city, all the way, passes right through Yeongdo, and it doesn't take that long to get to Hewunde. And I was really surprised, just as I had said, I told the mayor that if we could lay those bridges, then Busan will be amazing. I'm sure he didn't listen to just my words and do that. But why is this place important? Not because Yeongdo is important, but if we are the ones that are going to do this work and save the next generation, then this place is important. That's why I'm saying that. And that's why our district mayor is not your average person. He's a district mayor of Busan, of Yeongdo. I think about it. He happens to be the district mayor of the district where our church is, and our church gathers all the people in the world. It's not a boast. What is the church? That it's a place where they enjoy the blessing of the throne and transmit that. And especially to the next generation. Then rightfully the economy of light will follow. I won't. I don't have to write it all down, but let me write down a few things. Even if I don't write it down, it will come. Isn't it amazing? We see that people of finances of fifteen nations gathered in Acts chapter two, verse nine through eleven. That they were so inspired that they gave all their offering before they left. 4장 30절, that if you look in chapter 4, verses 3 to 37, it says that they even gave over their land. That was Barnabas. And that it was the economy of light that moves the world. This saves the world. And let's see what happened. I'm sure there was a lot, but let's look at what's in the Bible. That if we look at Acts 9, verse 36 to 43, who was this? It was Tabitha, who was just a seamstress. And who in Acts 10? It's a Simon the Tanner. It's nothing much. And then sewing clothes and selling leather goods, it's not much. After 16 was 15, a seller of purple cloth, Lydia. It's nothing much. But when that is used for this blessing, then it becomes an economy of light. If the offering that you give is used properly to save people, then it becomes the economy of light. And ultimately, Romans 16 verse 23, the host to all the church. In this way, look at the entire Bible. Holding this answer, they were able to do the healing move that nobody else could do. And this answer will come in the future. In Acts 3, verse 1 to 12, the crippled man arose. And this crippled man is very important. How can a crippled man stand up? I remember saying this before, but when I was giving a sermon on this, I just didn't find it believable. 
Oh, yes, I did find it believable, but it didn't seem to match with me. Then, when I first came to Yongda, I was doing a sermon throughout the book of Acts. I began with chapter 1 and chapter 2, but I got stuck in chapter 3. And so I couldn't give a sermon on that. But there was one thing that I was shocked by. Then Wednesday night, I had to give a message on Acts chapter 3, but that afternoon, I happened to go to the Chaoji fish market and I saw a crippled man passing by. Then he was going by on a scooter and he had some music on it. I don't know, perhaps there was a meeting of crippled people that day because 10 of them passed by me. Then what would you think? I need to give a sermon on Acts chapter 3 that night. And then all these crippled people were passing by me. Then like Peter, I should walk up and say, look at me, stand up and walk. And the reason why I'm saying this is because Reverend Kim Ik-do, when he was a seminary student, he saw a group man passing by. And he's thinking, oh, Peter raised a group man, then why can't I? And then he began to think, what happens if the group man doesn't get up? And so assistant pastor Kim Ik-do, he carried that group man to a back alley where there was nobody. And they're exactly the way it's in the Bible. He said, in the name of Jesus Christ, now that I command you to get up and walk. He grabbed that crippled man's arm and pulled. And forget about getting up. He started screaming that his arm was dislocated. But this man later realized. And I too, as I was worrying about that, realized that day. That it was a crippled man who was born crippled in front of the temple gate called Beautiful. Nobody else could raise him. Isn't that so? Think about it. He was born crippled. But he, Peter proclaimed, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, get up and walk. And so exactly opposite of what I happened in the fish market, I experienced when I went to Russia. And it's something that I was so surprised by. Then I was no raised a crippled man, but a disciple next to me prayed for that crippled person, and that person got up. That tremendous things happen in the place where Christ is proclaimed for the first time. Nobody could stop this. Samaria, Acts chapter 8. These are the things that take place. You don't have to worry about the church because this is the church. That what do you do in the church? Is the church where the restoration, the current light, to shine the light in the darkness, and is the place where you can heal the many people who cannot be healed? And look at Acts 13, 16, and 19. That this is not something that medical technology can heal. Shamans, divination, and people who are sick because of idol worship, they were all healed. These are the works that take place. And what else? Ultimately, they went into the synagogue. Why? Because that's where the next generation were. into the lecture halls. That's what the Bible tells us. That it's telling us the amazing way. Where do we go? Into the marketplaces. What's the marketplace? Then, like actually 11, then the places where people gather. That actually 19, it would be lecture halls. And then 13 and 16 and 18, it is the synagogue. That you have to let the next generation know this mystery. And full fledged will begin that this year in 2022. And so, if you live, you can save everything. Isn't that so? That is our first lecture, my 24 hours. That if our district mayor continues these blessings, then our entire district will be revived. My 24 hours. 
When the early church received answers, they could save all the way to Rome. We call that the blessing of the throne. This we need to transmit to our next generation. We call that the church. The church should not do other things, just this. And tomorrow we're going to talk about the bless- this blessing of the throne upon our field. Field 24 hours. This year's covenant is going to be a covenant by which we receive answers. So firmly hold to it and pray. Let us pray. We give thanks to God. Let your words be imprinted into us as a covenant that is living and active. And may we witnesses who experience this as we pray. May we be the church that saves the next generation. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen.